So there are quite a lot of different mysteries about various objects in a solar system. And many of these mysteries will often involve some sort of a moon of some kind of a planet, for example Saturn, Jupiter or Mars. But looks like one of these mysteries, in regards to one of the moons, might have been solved. At least to some extent. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're going to be talking about this unusual feature that you see right here on Phobos, the moon of Mars. These unusual stripe-like features, or almost like scratches, whose origin was always mysterious ever since they were originally found decades ago. With at least two ideas, trying to explain what's actually happening here and how these stripes were potentially formed. But looks like we might finally have an answer, and actually quite a definitive answer at that. Based on some of the recent simulations from NASA, that essentially allow us to not just understand how these features were formed, but what exactly is going to happen to Phobos in the next 50 million years. And to some extent also connecting these particular features to some of the other ones we've discovered in the solar system that we're going to be discussing near the end of the video. But first, what exactly is Phobos? Well, we don't really know its exact origin, but it's essentially what we usually refer to as a dwarf moon. And they're called that for an obvious reason. They're really tiny compared to a lot of other moons, and obviously compared to Mars itself. Phobos is only about 11.3 kilometers across, the second moon, Deimos, is approximately half the size. But because these moons orbit in a very similar fashion to how Mars rotates, it was always implied that their formation history might actually be related to some kind of a major collision with Mars a long time ago that ended up producing these two objects through essentially emissions from the surface of Mars. But it was also proposed that maybe these were just captured asteroids from the asteroid belt, although this particular explanation did not really satisfy a lot of scientists simply because of the orbits observed. So their origin story is still a bit of a mystery. But what's not a mystery is that Phobos seems to be moving closer to Mars, approximately 2 centimeters per year. And that means that within about 30 to maybe 50 million years, it will end up being shredded by the Martian gravity, by the tidal forces, and create a beautiful set of rings around Mars, making Mars the second ring planet. But it's also been speculated that after that, it might actually start separating from Mars again, recreating Phobos once again. And so some scientists have even speculated that this is a kind of a cycle that goes on around Mars every few hundred million years. But the point is that it's going to fall apart. It's going to be destroyed and create a set of rings. That part is almost certain. But what is not certain is the current topography or the current surface of the Phobos itself. Now, if you were to look around Phobos, there are usually two defining features of this unusual object. You can see both really well in this image by NASA. There is a huge crater known as the Stickney Crater, created by some kind of a major collision millions of years ago, or possibly even billions of years ago. But there are also these unusual grooves, parallel grooves, that seem to stretch across the surface of the object. As if something scratched Phobos, or as if something rolled across it, or for some entirely different reason. Now, because they seem to emanate from the crater, the first original explanation that a lot of scientists kind of agreed with basically involved some kind of a major asteroid collision, possibly from the surface of Mars, that first of all created the crater, but then a lot of debris, mostly boulders, rolled across the surface, leaving behind these line-like formations. And because the gravity here was much lower, they were essentially able to roll across almost entire surface. Although some explanations have even suggested that maybe some of these boulders or some of these scratches were actually caused by debris coming from Mars itself. But a lot of these earlier assumptions were made based on the fact that scientists thought that Phobos was actually kind of hard, it was basically relatively dense. But new observations reveal that it's really not. It's more of a rubble pile, it's a lot more powdery, and actually has a huge amount of powder on the surface, potentially hundreds of meters thick. So in some sense it resembles a typical desert, at least in terms of the actual texture. And so because of that, scientists started to speculate that it was probably a different explanation, something that some other scientists proposed years ago as well, with all of this connected to that eventual fate of Phobos, the fate being falling apart and creating a set of rings. In other words, what the scientists actually suggest now is that it's a lot more likely that all of this is caused by tidal stress, implying that these are signs that Phobos is already falling apart. In other words, these are tidal stretch marks. The tidal forces from Mars are stretching and pulling Phobos so much that it started to acquire these unusual formations, and they make a pretty strong argument about it. And the reason why this is happening is of course because Phobos is already really close to Mars. A single orbit here only takes just over 7 hours, 
And that means that Phobos experiences very powerful tidal forces from Mars itself. And so in this case, here's what the scientists simulated and here's what they found. By trying to simulate a miniature Phobos and by actually simulating the effects from Mars, they discovered that if you have a somewhat sand-like formation on the surface, or basically a kind of a loose layer, it will eventually start forming these grooves as you can see in the simulation. And all of this was repeated several times with all of these formations forming every single time. And actually formations here were almost exactly the same as observed in real life. Here is a kind of a surface view, or I guess top-down view, that shows you how all this forms in actually a relatively short time. With all of this providing evidence that Phobos is basically slowly falling apart, with the structure underneath already failing, creating these scratches we see. And more importantly, it also seems to be uncovering some of the hidden internal materials, which will eventually reveal the hidden interior structure of this moon. And so by actually collecting samples from these grooves, it might become possible to learn so much about the history of Phobos and the history of Mars. Although in this case, the scientists do mention that their predictions were not perfectly aligned with observations, which could be because of different structure, which could imply that there might be more than one mechanism at work here, or that the structure and composition of Phobos is different depending on the location. In other words, there are still some questions to be answered. But in this case, the model is really, really convincing and definitely explains exactly what we're observing. More importantly, it also explains a lot of other objects that we know have very similar features and whose origin was also implied to be tidal in nature. For example, Neptune's moon Triton, which is also slowly moving closer and closer to the planet, is also experiencing tidal effects and also possesses several unexplained grooves that were very likely tidal in nature. But more importantly, the Saturn's Enceladus is actually filled with different grooves as well. But more specifically, it has these very unusual features known as tiger stripes, very close to the southern pole, with very thin ice where quite a lot of geyser-like emissions have been detected in the past and that are actually going to be explored by some of the future missions in the next few years. And these unusual features, approximately 30 kilometers long, are also quite equally separated from one another and have been previously discovered to be created by a very specific orbital resonance with the partner Dione and by eccentric orbit around Saturn. And so this unusual orbit around Saturn and the interaction with the neighboring moon ends up creating a lot of tidal effects on the surface of Enceladus, which then results in very similar formation of the grooves, although in this case, instead of rocky-like silicate materials, it's basically mostly water, possibly mixed with some other materials and some other ices. Although intriguingly, another moon that has unusual stripes, Europa, the moon of Jupiter seems to have these for possibly a very different reason. These have been implied to be very similar to what we have on Earth, plate tectonics. These could be actual plates, ice plates in this case, moving around, shifting around, interacting, and creating tectonic motion on the surface, mixing the internal and external materials. Although in this case, the motion and the interaction, just like in this system, is very likely caused by the larger planet. The gravity from Saturn and Jupiter is strong enough to drive all of these effects. And so in short, most of these stripes in the solar system seem to be usually caused by very strong gravity from a major body nearby and by essentially tidal interactions. The same types of forces that we usually attribute to, for example, black holes. The most extreme tidal interaction possible is usually around a supermassive black hole that destroys a star. These are known as the tidal disruption events. But obviously, any object that has mass can produce tidal effects as well, just not as strong as a black hole. And you can find out more about these in some of the videos in the description. But at least for now, it looks like the scientists might have finally solved the mystery of Phobos, the moon of Mars. These stripes are most likely tidal in nature and are basically the first sign that the moon is falling apart and is eventually going to turn Mars into a ringed planet. But because Japan is planning a mission here in the next few years, and is actually going to be collecting samples from this particular moon, we might discover something else in the process, especially if they manage to collect samples from one of these grooves. So until these future discoveries, that's pretty much it. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.